Hey guys, it's Alex here from Omi. In this video, I want to take a closer look at some of Namron's smart home devices. And Namron is a brand specifically set up in Norway and available at electroimporten.no. Namron is their house brand, which means that you have the support of a big retailer behind your smart home devices. And not only that, Namron is also a Talks with Homey partner and they've received the Verified Partner Badge to go along with their app. Now what that means is our QA team has actually taken a look at their integration, tested it, and we've made sure that everything works. And so you guys are guaranteed the best user experience for these devices if you're using Homey. Now Namron has a large lineup of different devices, ranging from lighting solutions, GU10s, E14s, E27s, so fitting into most sockets in a home. And they've got LED strips, built-in modules, dimmer buttons, and buttons for on the wall that are both battery powered and or built-in modules so you can plug them in and wire them in to have them there full time. Now the interesting thing about Namron is they also provide these devices either on Zigbee or Z-Wave networks. And that's perfect for us smart homers that have a certain network already set up in home. So I'd always advise people with lots of Zigbee devices or people with lots of Z-Wave devices to keep building onto that network since these networks actually tie into each other. So a quick rule of thumb is powered or fully powered devices like light bulbs or built-in modules act as router devices, meaning they often expand your network. Battery powered devices will link into those router devices and they'll act as, let's say, endpoints or nodes. And that means that as you're building these networks, either Zigbee or Z-Wave, the more the devices you have, specifically more powered devices, the better your network will be as a whole. Now what I'm gonna do is pair up these devices into Homey and create a few flows to show off their capabilities and to sort of unify that smart home experience. Now, I'm not gonna do that individually in this video. I've actually got a whole playlist called Quick Connect Videos. And so if you're looking at buying one of these devices or you already have one in house, and you wanna know how you pair that up with Homey, check out those videos for specific device instructions on how to do it. Now I should mention that with Homey, you always get detailed pairing instructions when you're looking to pair a device. So you don't really need to use the videos, but if you need a helping hand in understanding how that goes, make sure to check those out. I'll come back to you in a few minutes once I've got all these devices paired up. Hey guys, I'm back again. Now I've connected up a few of these Namron devices up to my Homey here and I've added them into my film studio zone so that we can start playing around with them a little bit. I wanna show off a little bit what the functions are of the devices themselves and how you can start using them in your smart home. So I've got a filament bulb set up here. I have an RGB bulb right here in this lamp and behind me, you'll see a five meter long LED strip that I've kind of stuck up on the, the backboards there so that you can see it. Now, by now we all know how smart lights work. I can control them right here in the Homey app, change their color, dim levels, and tune them to fit my needs. Then you can create flows that based on perhaps times of day, zone activity, basically turn off and on the lights. Now, Namron also had a range of buttons that you can hang up on the wall. And I wanna take a look at creating some flows for those buttons that go together with their lighting solutions so that you kind of see what the full package experience will look like if you're looking at buying some of these devices. Now, bear in mind, if you're using Homey and you already have some smart lights in your house, say from Philips Hue or Ikea or Acara, basically any smart lighting brand that you can connect up to Homey and you've already got them in the Homey app, you can always add devices like these switches from Namron to control those lights as well. It doesn't all have to be part of the same ecosystem. So you're free to choose from different devices, from different manufacturers and brands to do different actions. And you link them all up in Homey using Flows. Now, if you're not familiar with Flows, I have a bunch of videos on my top five flow ideas, on creating your own flows, on creating advanced flows using Logic, for example. So make sure to go check out those videos if you're not so familiar with Flows yet. For the purposes of this video and looking specifically at Namron, Let's create a quick flow for the dimmer button switch that I have here. Now remember, this is a battery powered, easy to mount, placeable anywhere in your home dimmer switch. 
Now let's take a look in the Homey app, what kind of flows we can create for this switch. I'm gonna add into flows and create a new flow. Now a quick way of finding all of my Namron devices is heading down here to my apps and then selecting Namron. This will come up with all of the Namron devices I have paired up to Homey. Now I wanna choose the rotary dimmer and I can select from a number of different when events. What I wanna do is use the switch button. So select that. Now you get a couple of modes, turned on and turned off. For this flow, I'll use a turned on mode and select a then event to say, hey, turn on all of my lights in the zone that I'm in right now and where I have this dimmer switch mounted. To do that, let's head into my zones, select my film studio and turn devices on. Then I'll make sure that Homie knows to only turn on my lights. Give it a quick name and it's safe. Now I want to do the same for turning off my lights, which is exactly the same process, but then when the off button is pressed. Now with those flows saved and running on Homie, all I need to do is press the button and you'll see that the lights around me that I have set up in my film studio zone all turn off, including my LED strip. Press the button one more time and they'll turn back on. Now what I want to do, this is a rotary dial, so I want to be able to change the brightness of all of these lamps. So I'll create a flow for that. For the when, I'm gonna head again to my Namron, my rotary dimmer, and in this case, I'm gonna use the brightness changed. Now you'll see for this card, it creates a tag called brightness. And brightness is a range from zero to one. So for the then event, I now need to set up cards for each of my lights to then follow that brightness tag that I've created in my when event. So simply head down to then, and let's select the Namron lights. Let's start with color. I'm gonna dim to, and then select the tag by tapping on tag here, selecting the tag, and then I'll have a bunch of tags to choose from. In this case, the local tag, which is created in this flow, is the one I wanna use. So it's really easy to find that one as it's right here at the top. I'm gonna to select that as my brightness. Now, I'll save that and repeat this process for my filament bulb and my LED strip. Once you've got all the devices you're looking to dim with the dimmer switch, add it into that flow, give it a quick name, hit save, and now we can actually test out the flow with the dimmer switch. So, if I give it a turn to the left, you'll see that my lights here dim, and so does my LED strip. Now, let's turn it up to the right, and you'll see that the lighting brightness increases again. Now, the dimmer switch actually has a few notches. So it's not a smooth rotation, but sort of a notchy, quite a nice feel to it rotation. So I can actually just go one or two clicks to the left and the lights will dim slightly. Now, if I had, let's say a full rotation to the left, they'll dim quite hard. So you can actually feel kind of the notches in dim level that you're increasing. So let's give it maybe five or so turns to the right and they'll come to a medium dim level. And if I turn it all the way, a full dim level. And then again, the flows that I created before are still active. So if I tap on it, the lights will turn off. And from here, if I now dim it up, the lights will also turn on because that brightness dim level actually activates and triggers the lights to turn on to that set brightness which is a really handy way of basically operating your lights with a dimmer switch that's wall mountable anywhere you want it because it's battery powered with a few smart lights and an LED strip connected to it. So enough about the dimmer switch. Now I also have a two channel button here. Maybe it's not so easy to see on camera, but there's an off and on side to it and a brightness side to it. And I'm gonna set up a similar flow as to with the dimmer switch but then with this two button device here. So I'll start with the switch button. And this is very similar to the dimmer switch. So I have it turned on and turned off mode. Then I'm gonna hook up 
to the light in the zone where I've placed the button, in this case, my film studio. Now with those two flows saved, very simply, if I press the off button, then my lights in my film studio zone turn off. Press it again, and they turn back on. Very similar to the dimmer switch. Now let's have a look at the dimming button. In this case, I already know that you actually have two functions with it. You have an increase in brightness and a decrease in brightness, or if you want it to be, you can set a random color by pressing the button down, or for example, maybe set the saturation or color temperature of your lights. So let's try that now. I'm gonna try and change the color temperature of the lights using this dim button here. For the when card, head to the button. I'm gonna use the brightness button and say when held down increasing. I then want the lights here to change to a warmer color. So I'll head to the lights. Another way of quickly and easily finding lights in a certain zone is to use the zones, film studio, and then you also have a list of the devices in that zone. So I can select, for instance, my filament bulb here. I can set a temperature. And as suggested here in the tips, a higher value means a warmer color. So I'm gonna set this to 100%. And 100% is normally a warm yellow color to sort of give you that evening atmosphere. I'm gonna continue and do this with my RGB light and my LED strip. Now I've saved that flow. I'll actually wanna create a second flow for when that button is held down again in the decreasing way and then setting the color temperature to a colder color. And now I've got all the flows I need for this button here saved on Homey. So let's give them a test out. If I now hold the brightness button down, You'll see that the lights here change to a cold white color. And if I hold it down again, they'll switch over to a warm yellow color. So the great thing about an RGB LED strip like the one behind me there is you can actually set the color in a certain flow. So what I'll do is I'll actually set the color to be cold in this case. So I'm gonna select from the color wheel, I think uh, just uh, pretty much in the center Maybe a little bit leaning towards a warmish, uh, a cold or cool yellow. And I'll select that. Now don't forget with flows like this, you can always just hit the test button to see if they're working. So I'm gonna tap on test. I see that the two lamps here change to a cold temperature. And I see that my LED strip also changes to a cool white. Now I'll save it and I'm gonna to head to the warm flow. I'm gonna remove what I have done, add another card, head to the LED strip, set a color, and I'm gonna select a nice warm, let me see here, a warm yellow. Gonna hit save, and again, let's try and test this flow. I hit the test button, and you might not see it on camera, but that LED strip is now a warmer yellow color. So I can save it. And now I know that, if I press the button here, changes to a cold color along with these other two lights and press it again and it changes to a warmer yellow color. So you can see it has multiple functions using flows in Homey and you can actually set it and design it in exactly the way you want it to. For instance, if you want to create maybe a party mode, you can set random colors for all the lights in your home by pressing this button. Or if you're hmm, maybe not wanting to go into party mode and you just wanna have a normal living room, you can also set this button up just to dim the lights to a maybe more comfortable level and then have it when you press it again to increase to full brightness, for example. And it's really up to you. Homey Pro gives you the power to change all those different things in your own flows. Now I hope that I've given you a taste of some of the devices that Namron has. And if you're looking at pairing the devices, don't forget to go check out my Quick Connect videos and you'll see how really easy they are to pair up to Homey. And obviously once paired, you guys can try and create your own flows to create that seamless smart home experience that you're looking for. 
Now, if you're living in Norway, make sure to go check out Namron as they have a wide range of different devices running on both Zigbee and Z-Wave. And they're actually really high quality and they'll work in most smart homes as long as you have Homey Pro to, you know, create those flows and build those connections on. Now, good luck and I'll see you in the next video.